You get to the big leagues, even for a cup of coffee, and it is an accomplishment. But if you make that trip the other way, from star of the show to the minors, even for a week or two, I don't care how trendy $7 lattes have become. It's a crisis. So the mere fact the Yankees are floating the idea of sending Jason Giambi down to the farm should give you a clue of just how far south the former MVP's game has gone. 77 at-bats this season, 15 hits. 29 strikeouts. They're on a flawed glove and a smoking Tino Martinez, and that adds up to lots of time in the dugout for Giambi. Not the best way to get back on track. Giambi met with manager Joe Torre, GM Brian Cashman, Tuesday night, and Jeremy Schapp here now with what came out of that intriguing get-together. When word got out Tuesday afternoon that Jason Giambi, who is struggling at the plate, was going to meet with Yankees general manager Brian Cashman and manager Joe Torre, speculation was rampant that he would be released. That did not happen. Then there were reports after the meeting that he was asked to go down to the minor leagues. The Yankees can only send him down if he agrees. But Giambi says he wasn't exactly asked to go down. We had talked about it. They didn't, there was no question of being asked. I, we had talked about it that they felt like if I needed to get some more time and work, but I felt I'm, I'm going the right direction. I feel like I'm okay. Granted, I'm not happy where my average is, no doubt about it. And anybody to say that they are would be wrong. But, I, you know, I know I'm, I'm doing everything I can the right way to, to get out of this, and that's working hard, and, and hopefully it'll start paying off. I don't make decisions around here. I just go and I play and, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'll do whatever needs to be done. Giambi indicated that he would prefer to stay at the major league level in part to continue to work with hitting instructor Don Mattingly. He also said that he feels he is not far off from returning to form. In New York, Jeremy Schapp, ESPN. All right, Jeremy, the Yankees' first baseman and designated hitter contribute against the, contributed against the Mariners, but neither of them named Giambi. A-Rod, the Yanks, trying to make it four in a row. Bottom three, tied at two. A-Rod against Aaron Seeley and Jeremy Reed. Nominee for a top play. It's the second out of the inning, but the next man is Tino Martinez, and he establishes contact with the server. His eighth home run, two-run shot, fourth straight game with a homer, and six of Tino's last eight hits have left the premises. Two Matters later, we have plenty of stats on Tino. How about a few on John Flaherty? He's owned Aaron Seeley, 467 average, three homers, five runs driven in. Doubles pass to Diving Reed and Bernie Williams, the DH in this game, who had a hit. Comes in to score. New York goes on top by a count of 5-2 to two there in the third inning. After a Robinson Cano RBI single, Seeley would be pulled, replaced by Julio Mateo, facing Derek Jeter. A little grounder to Beltre. Now, Keep your eye on Cano. He takes a big turn there, a little bit too big. Adrian Beltre thinks he's got him, and he's only got him if Cano had been headed to center field. <laughs> Cano uses the speed, comes in to score. Yankees win again 7-4. to four. The Yankees have won four in a row. That's the longest run currently in the majors going on at the moment. Now we have a first managerial casualty of the 05 season. Tony Pena is out heading into Tuesday night's game. Royals had dropped 15 of 18. Hard to forget Pena's first words when he was hired as KC manager. He said, quote, I'm the DJ. I play the music. Everybody's going to dance. If you can't dance, get off the dance floor. There's been a little parking on the dance floor lately. <laughs> He's out the dance City. floor. He is, if the music has stopped, he does not have a chair. Tony Pena's first full season as manager in 03. He had Kansas City in contention most of the year before they faded down the stretch. Been a dramatic fade since then, just 8 and 25 this season. That gives you a hint as to what's going to happen against the Blue Jays because they came into the game 8 and 24. <laughs> Bottom three tied at one. Here is Shea Hillenbrand. Oh. Jay Hillenbrand logs on for the third time this season. Blue Jays taking a 3-1 lead. Top seven, same score man on. Oh, Halliday. Roy Halliday getting Emil Brown with a breaking ball. Halliday is third complete game. Lasted just an hour and 44 minutes. Pena on his way out as the Royals lose 3-1. Rolling Stones have reached a deal to play Fenway Park this summer. Tuesday it was just the Red Sox and the A's. Two outs here in the fifth and 1-1 game. And Trot Nixon's hope for a base hit shattered by Eric Burns. Shadoobie, top plane nominee, keeps it tied at 1-1. Bronson Roy unbeaten in 15 straight starts. That's the longest run in the majors. Top seven, still 1-1. Adam Malhews bounces one back to Royal. Smart play, check the runner, throw to first. That's all good. Except Guilty's going. Look at it one more time. Bobby says, psych. 
He's in there, and the A's go on top, two to one. Bottom of the ninth, though, runners on first. Octavio Dotel facing Kev Millar with his first homer on Monday. Got any more magic left in that bottle? In the air to deep left field. High, deep, and go! The Red Sox win! They just come in bunches, you know? I mean, I'm glad they're starting to come now because it was a long time. I just got driving more than I let him. That's the big thing. I told Theo that today. I said, we're going to take offense instead of defense, so I got to start swinging the bats better. Millar second. Give the Sox a 3-2 win. Give the win to Matt Venta, his first since 2003. From the champs to the best team in the show this season, White Sox and Devil Rays, Jose Contreras, 2-0, 120 ERA for his career at the Trop. Bottom four against uh, Toby Hall apparently cares nothing about the fact bar. <laughs> You hey, can't ignore a fact you bar. You just can't ignore the fact bar at the bottom of the highlight screen. Well, don't ignore this one. Shingo Takatsu, six earned and eight and two-thirds. Bottom nine, Jorge Cantu cannot. Cantu. There's a high fly ball hit deep to left. That will send Wasabi back and it's out of here. Home run for Jorge Cantu. And the double Rays win it seven to six. Cantu did two. Devil Rays. Win the series from the White Sox, 7-6. Monday, Tuesday, old Jason Jennings felt the effects of the altitude. Top first, already 4-0, Raul Mondesi. Corey Sullivan coming, coming, coming. That's a big outfield. He can't get there. Ryan Longerhan scores. Five of the Braves, they would get six runs in the first inning, much to the light of young Christopher Davis. Top second, 6 nothing. Bravos. Johnny Estrada flies to left. And this time, going the other way, Sullivan makes the catch and gets himself a top 10 nominee. Excellent work by him. Top 995 Braves. Starters. Jay Watasik to Marcus Giles and Brad Hopp going back. And he leaps, hops, jumps up there high, almost like Phil Mickelson. That thing got stuck up there in the scoreboard. All right, well, part of the six pack of questions then is what's that? It's a ground rule double. Braves win it by a count of 9 5. Nationals and the Diamondbacks. Amari Stoudemire taking in a little baseball. Things going well for his club. Things going well for Washington's Tony Armas Jr. At least into the sixth. It's a 2 nothing lead for Washington. Luis Gonzalez up there. Takes ball one, ball two, ball three, and ball four. So pitching coach Randy St. Clair is going to come out and see how Armas feels. The source of the control problems. They hope rectified. Here's Troy Boss. Ball one. Ball two. That's ball three. Johnny, you go turn him loose here. <laughs> what do you think? Swing hard. Finish high. Troy Gloss, the three-run shot. Diamondbacks win it 3-2. Gloss getting his 10th home run of the year. Giants' best pitchers join their best hitter on the disabled list. Well, Jason Schmidt's right shoulder strain seems far less serious. Certainly not the soap opera Barry Bonds' knee injury. Schmidt 2-1 and one this season. ERA sniffing five after winning 18 games a year ago. All right, Tuesday it was the Giants and the Pirates. Scoreless in the fourth. Dave Williams facing Pedro Feliz. Feliz figures he's got himself a base hit. There's Jason Bay on his horse and got it. Oh, yeah, run the Bay Colt to Pimlico, huh? Pirates in the wrong end of a two-zip score, but there's Bay again with two on, launching it to left. That one off Jim Brower was not pleased. Bay's three and homer is sixth of the season. Buckos win it 5-2. Indians and the Angels, CC Sabathia 2-0. 071 ERA in his last two starts against the Halos. Bottom one, no score. Oh, see what you have done. Garrett Anderson buzzing the light tower, busting out of an 0-for-9 slump with a two-run job. His fourth of the season. Angels up 2-0. Orlando Cabrera grounds one to third. There is Aaron Boone with a top play nominee. Nifty play there. Bottom five, game tied at two. Man on two out. Sabathia against Josh Paul. Paul is hitting a buck 11 on the year. Two-run shot. First of the season, second of his career against Sabathia. Angels up 4-2. Francisco Rodriguez gets Johnny Peralta to ground out. Angels win it by a foul count of 5-4. Paul Bird now 4-0 no lifetime against the Reels, taking on the Twins. Rafael Palmero, seven homers and 50 career at-bats against Brad Radke. And Palmero is swinging a big fact ball. 
His second home run of the year, 553rd of his career. Orioles up 3-1 as he takes Radke out. Bottom five, O's up 3-2. There is Brian Roberts. Boy, what kind of season is this guy having? Turns on one from Radke, his 10th of the year already. Orioles up 4-2, but we go to extra innings, and the O's pen couldn't hold it for Eric Bedard. Got the extras. Pitch hitter Jock Jones takes the 3-2 pitch out against Steve Klein. Klein served up another on the next pitch to Shannon Stewart. Twins beat the Orioles 6-4 and 10. Cardinals and Dodgers, Scott Erickson, veteran pitcher, but first ever appearance at Bush Stadium. Bottom four, Reggie Sanders well, facing Erickson. Dodgers up 3-2, pops up Oscar Robles. Fresh out of the Mexican League's first day on the job, and he's always been more of a hitter, really. Next pitch, Sanders. This is why you cannot give the other team extra outs. Ties it at three with the solo home run. He would add one more on the night. Bottom five, four, three. Scotty Rowland headed down the first baseline hard. He and he saw Choi get together. Rowland would leave the game with a sprained left shoulder. That is not good. We go into the six. Dodgers now down one. Choi up with two on. Dave Duncan says, Kevin Jarvis, you are my man. Ready for it? You're there in the pen if I need you. Choi makes him pay. Three run shot to dead center. Six of the year. Always easy to second guess when that guy slows down to trot around second base and head for home. Dodgers go on to win this one 9 8, even up the series at 1 1. Mets and the Cubs. Cubs have been struggling mightily, but Greg Maddox has won seven straight against the Mets, 33 and 15 in his career, and he was starting strong. Guess Piazza swinging. Next inning, check out this grip. This guy can do amazing things with funny grips on the horse side, as Kaz Matsui can testify to. Maddox struck out five of the first ten. Then a little offense from Corey Patterson against Chris Benson. Patterson's seventh home run of the season. Bottom five again. Benson tries him again, and he's still bona fide. Patterson's eighth of the year, 4 nothing Cubs. Cub hitters, in fact, homered in four straight innings. Met hitters did not. <laughs> Maddox getting Tiazza, and then Doug Mankiewicz would strike out looking. Maddox went six and two-thirds scoreless, struck out 10. 16th career double-digit strikeout game. Cubs win it by a touchdown. For David Bell, base is loaded, two out. And Alfonso Marquez calls a strike. Bell not happy with that one. He's not the only one. Watch Marquez. He just threw out Chuck Manuel before he got to the dugout. Well, you know, sometimes a man's got something on his mind. He's going to come get it off his chest whether he's been tossed or not. Top seven more. David Bell and Marquez. One, two uh -oh. pitch. Yep. Strike three called. And now Bell, he's hot and cold. Oh, it's okay. Stay cool, brother. No. Oh, Full on difference on. of opinion. It may have been whispered, but, but you shouldn't have said the word anyway. Now he's in there and really going to have at it. Plenty, a lot of guys exercising the First Amendment right to free speech here. Let's just go, oh boy. Now we're abusing equipment, a little kick. Been watching Lou Pinell at home, I guess, late night on Classic. Ninth inning, Ricky Batalico gets Tomas Perez right back to him. Brewers win at 8-5. Batalico's first save since August of 2001 when he was a Philly. Oh, that's nice. And the Padres, bottom five, two nothing already, Reds, and here comes the mayor. Sean Casey, smoking one to the gap, one would score there. Casey, couple hits, drove in three. Reds went 5-1. Marlins and Astros, Carlos Delgado, the Marlins down 2-1, goes the other way. Marlins win at 6-2. For more on the Marlins, here's Carl Ravage in our Baseball Tonight, guys. Oh, yeah. Tee him up and roll him out. It is the Sports Center. Top 10 plays, number 10, Dodgers, Cardinals, J.D. Drew. Going to get out there and make the catch. Now, he's worked out there in right field of Bush Stadium before, so he's familiar with all the things that are happening. Makes a nice catch. 9-8, bums a winner. Well, that's with a glove. But at number 9, a little foot from Chan Ho Park, and now the bare hand. Rangers win at 5-4, fighting Showalters, taking out the Tigers. Number eight, Mariners Yankees. We got a guy with a bare hand. We got a guy with a glove. See how that works out. Randy Wynn into the stands. Who's got it? Ball player has it. Look at that guy. He's in there and he's trying to steal the pearl from him. Hey, it's mine. Number seven, Padres and Reds. Brian Giles to knock. Mark Loretta going to try to go for third. How do you feel about a little vintage junior? Get back, Loretta. Right back to the dugout. Reds win at 5-1. Number six, Pirates Giants by the Bay. It's Jason Bay diving to make the catch. He also added a three-run homer, so that's a nice night for him as the Bucks win.
Try to ingest number five. Refrigerator Perry was in a cake eating contest. Now, now he's got the space to, for all the storage, but he keeps losing. Hey, you're like a 135 pound guy, beat him. On size, yeah. Now, again, surprised about Eric Badlands Booker. Number four A's Red Sox trot Nixon, thought he had a base hit. Eric Burns thought differently. Excellent catch. More on that in a bit, though. And number three, Braves and Rockies, Corey Sullivan. Down 6 nothing, still giving up the body in the uniform with a full extension grab. Remember when I told you more in a bit? Uh, I know you this did. This is the bit. Number two, A's Red Sox. Kevin Millar coming through with the ninth. His team down one. Swing. In the air to deep left field. High, deep, and go! The Red Sox win! Sox win a 3-2, a walk-off Millar. And at number one, John wondered earlier just where Eddie Jones' dunk would rank. Number one, John. Well, baseline so reverse. He wears number six. I was just thinking. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, didn't bail myself out, did I? <laughs> number one, Eddie Jones. Heat getting victory, too.